Yo what's up, my name is Severman and in today's video I will show you how I made my latest track better than her. Let's dive right into the project file. So let's start with the breaks, let's start with the vocals. So a lot of people ask me where I got the vocals from if I contacted a singer and with this track I actually just took vocals from Splice. So these solely sound like that. Time on our own, it's not even light yet. So these are actually three individual samples that I put together. So this one right here is like one vocal sample, then we got this one and we got this one and using these three like snippets I made one full vocal track basically. So this is only the lead vocal that we have but the pack that I use also came with some harmonies so I added these as well and these sound like that. And this is actually also a trick to make your vocal sound wide and thick in the chorus especially. So because a lot of people sometimes ask me you know, how do you make your vocal sound really wide. So first of all the lead vocal that you have should mostly be center like in, in the middle of the stereo field. So if you have any vocal harmonies or doubles um, provided by this singer you can just do it like that so what I did I have these harmonies right here or actually it's, it was one harmony file that I had and what I did I duplicated that one and I shifted them so that they're not perfectly aligned so as you can see this one is a little bit shifted to the front and then this one a bit to yeah like a bit to the back and this way or actually I also panned then one to the left side using the panning knob and then the other one to the right side and this way I create with 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 <laughs> with with the vocal harmonies so again if I play these if you're listening to this video right now on proper speakers or headphones you can definitely hear how it sounds really wide right now. And then again with the lead vocals, which are mono. Boy, I, I know you better. We create a really nice, thick and wide sounding chorus. And now if you're wondering, okay, I have a vocal, it's from a sample pack or whatever, but I don't have any doubles or harmonies. How do I now create with? So what you can do is you can still clone or duplicate your vocal that you have and you can go in with a pitch corrector and actually sort of make artificial harmonies this way. So what you could use with FL Studio, you could use the new tone and create your own fake harmonies if that makes sense. And then again, you could duplicate that one pan one to the left, pan one to the right, shift them a little bit that you have some, yeah, like that they're not perfectly aligned so that they're coming with a bit of delay from each side. So before I show you the processing of the vocals, let me actually show you what else we got in the break. So we have this piano right here. So this is just a basic Nexus piano that I use. And with this one, I sort of introduced already the melody of the drop, but it's not qu quite the actual melody that we're using later, but it's sort of just teasing it in a different way. Like it's not the exact melody. Then we have some chords right here. Okay, these are actually not turned on, so just forget about these. Then we have 
these are the actual chords right here. So for this one I used true pianos as well as a sub bass underneath the piano in order to give it more body and more yeah, th like thickness if that makes sense. Alright then we have this sound right here as well in the beginning of the break. So this is like an ARP sound that I implemented in the track and I have this one playing th yeah, throughout almost the entire track as you can see. So I'm using it in the intro as well. I thought this one really adds some nice harmony and variation in the background of the track. But that's then already it with the beginning of the break that we have. So it's just this ARP type of sound. Then we have the piano and the sub bass in here and we got the sort of like the top piano playing a variation of the melody and then we got the vocal. So the beginning of the track is actually really minimalist. There's not really a whole lot going on because that was the vibe that I was going for in the beginning. I really wanted it to be calm and relaxing. And then after 15 seconds, I wanted to start to build the tension in the track and to yeah, give them more energy slowly as we come closer to the drop. So let's continue with it. Alright, so what am I doing in this part? I'm basically dropping out the top piano that we had in previously. Instead, I'm starting to introduce the actual melody and the leads with a low pass filter. So these are really just slowly coming into the track from the background. They're not too obvious yet at this part, but we will check them out later in the drop. So I will show you all the layers and stuff because that's also what a lot of you guys requested to like show you all the leads, like the layers that I use. So that's what I'll be looking at as well in this tutorial. And then I added some strings to this part and these make it sound really big, epic, emotional. So for these ones, I used Nexus and yeah, the Hollywood brace sounds, as well as this flex right here. Then we have a downlifter right here. So these type of sounds help to make the transitions a bit more smooth and to also add some high end. Then I'm also starting to introduce the bass line at this point. With the bass line I will show you the layers when we're at the drop later. Then again we got the piano for the chords. Now the only difference is that I took out the sub bass in this pattern that we had in this one right here because I'm now introducing the bass line as I just said and this would have been clashing with the sub bass that I had underneath the piano so I took it out there. And yeah, then we have some more FX sounds. And then I'm opening up the ARP as well. And then I'm adding more FX sounds as we come close to the drop and to the build out of the track. So this is a riser, like it's just a basic like white noise sweep. Yeah, then I'm adding like claps to the build up. Then this is the snare that I used. Yeah, 
So this is just a basic cashmere snow, so nothing really special about that one. Then in this pattern right here, I have a sub riser. So I just made that one in the threes oscillator right here. So it's just a triangle wave that's being pitched up. Then I'm opening up the piano even more with the low pass filter. Then I'm doing the same thing to the bass line as well. So I'm opening it up. And I also turned on the sidechain already in the build up because I felt like it gave it a nice groove and like pump already. And then we have another impact sound. And yeah, then obviously the leads that are also being opened up with, with the low pass filter. And then I actually also added the kick drum to the build up. That's then also the reason why I sidechained the bass line already. And that's pretty much it with the break and the build up already. So let's check it out again. So as you can tell, there really isn't too much in this track so far, I would say. So let's continue with the drop and let me show you like probably the most important part of the track. All right, let's start with the kick drum. So this is the kick drum right here. Then let me show you the leads. So again, since like a lot of you guys asked about the leads, I will show you these now in depth really. So the main layer that I used for Better Than Her for the leads is a preset from Flex actually. Flex is a new plugin from FL Studio. So this one, that's the one I'm talking about. And solo lead, this one sounds like that. Then we got a few Nexus layers right here. So this is a guitar type of sound. Then we have another Nexus, so this is like the well-known Angel 1 lead that everyone is using in Progressive Frost. But it really works, like, you know, there's a reason why a lot of people use it. It's a really nice, ravey type of sound that really adds to the overall lead sound. Then we got another Nexus. This one is also a yeah, detuned saw type of sound. Then we have a string sound from this plugin right here. If you have watched my previous videos, you might already know this plugin. I think it's a free yeah, orchestral plugin. Then we got another instance of Nexus. This one is the native synth brass preset. And then we have two more spiral layers. So this one is this preset from Spire. And then this last one is that one, the Inspiration, what is it called? Inspiration SK lead. So again, let's put them all together. So let's also take a look at how I process them. So what you can see is I rooted them all to one channel. So this is just my way of doing it because I feel like that's the quickest way for me to produce. 
like usually it makes sense to route them all to a separate channel first and then to route them to a bus channel to you know put the reverb on it and like low and high cut and stuff but yeah with this track i just wanted to work quick and i just routed them straight to the bus channel all so let's take a look at that channel right here so i got quite a lot of effects on that one so this is an eq so it's quite crazy eq right here so i really boosted the 350 hertz with that one it's like an 8 db boost that's really crazy then i dipped out some of the 780 hertz again i boosted the 1.8 k hertz a little bit and then i also boosted the top end about uh, above 4k hertz some more so let's actually turn off all the effects so that we can see what they're actually doing to the leads. So this is how they would sound without any processing at all. Now let's turn on the first EQ. So this one just adds some more body to the leads, you can say. And then the second EQ is just for the low and the high cut, so it won't really make the lead sound any different. It's really just to sort of keep them in their range and to, you know, remove any unwanted low frequencies, low rumble that shouldn't be in there. So then the next one is an imager by Isotope Ozone. With this one, what's cool is you can create different bands and you can shape them individually. So what I did here, I boosted this band right here. So this is from like 120 hertz to 800 hertz. And I made these more wide than the rest. Then this band, I made it a little less wide by like minus 5%. And then again, I boosted the top end above 10k hertz a little bit and not boosted it i spread it out a bit then we got the p controller and the fruity reverb 2 so yeah it's just adding reverb so yeah with the reverb i always low cut the reverb in order to yeah, make it less boomy or like yeah less heavy the reverb so i usually set on the leads the low cut to like 800 hertz something like that so that's 800 hertz in that project and i always have the high cut in the reverb set to 10k hertz then with the decay time, I actually really cranked it up to six seconds. I usually go for something like three or four seconds or like 3.5 seconds. But with this one, I just wanted to have that longer sort of release. Um, yeah, when the leads are playing, then we have a stereo enhancer. And with this one, I widened like the whole frequency range a bit up in the leads. And then we have the high pass filter for automation and the build up to remove on the lower mids and then we got another filter but this this one is a low pass filter so this is also for automation i can show you the automation clip so i'm actually yeah i'm actually using the high pass filter in the drop so i'm i'm turning down the low pass filter and i'm opening up the high pass filters so in order to create this variation in the middle of the drop right here so let's check that out just creates this little variation right there You no, know, it's just like this small detail that adds up to the entire track. And then the last two ones are for the sidechain. So first of all, we got this kickstart for yeah, like the, the first sidechain. And then I used a gross beat to really make sure the leads aren't interfering with the top kick. Then I'm also using the strings in the drop. only difference is that they are now sidechained. Then I added this voice type of ambient sound to the drop. It's not actually a voice, it's more like a string. It's, it's not a voice. Then we have a write. Then we got some impact and like downlifters. Then we got the bass line, so let's check out that one. So 
So I think what's really special with that one is this automation thing that I did right here in the middle of the drop. I think it creates a really interesting fade out. So for the layers, I have one threes oscillator for the sub bass. So this is just a sine ref right here in the first oscillator. Then the second one, I pitched it up by one octave so that we're covering two octaves. And then the third oscillator is yeah, I turned down, so this one's not active. So the sine wave sounds, or like the sub wave sounds like that. So it's really just those lower sub frequencies. And then we have three layers for the mid bases. So this is the first ones from sound one. Oh, it's just a basic super saw bass sound. Then the second one. more of a gritty mono bass layer that I added. Then let's check out the third one. This one really just adds some more mids to the bass line. Then for the processing, I rooted the mid basses to channel five. Then this one is actually not used, so let's just not talk about that one. The second one is turn on. So I just boosted the mid-range some more in the baseline and I reduced the top frequencies. Then we got the low and the high cut for them. So with the mid-bases, I set the low cut to 92 hertz and then the range or like the frequencies below that are covered with the sub bass that we have. Then I have a stereo announcer to wind them up a bit more. And then we got some filters for automation right here. And then we got, yeah, this is the one that I use for like this um, automation thing in the middle of the drop. Just creates this stutter sort of effect. Then the second one is for the actual sidechain. So I used this type of curve right here. Yeah, and then we got a fruity balance for volume automation. All right, then we have some more cards. So as you can tell, I sort of gated these up in order to create a more rhythmic pattern to, yeah, to add a more rhythmic pattern to the overall chord tone and to the drop. Then, so this is just, again, like a super saw type of sound that I made in Silent One. And what's special about that one is I created this resonating sort of frequency right here. And this one helps to make it pop out in the mix. Then we have this EQing right here for the high cut and then I rolled off the bass frequencies. And then again with filter for automation, the stereo announcer to widen these chords up. Then this one is for also like what I did with the bass line. Then we got sidechain, this first one. And then also this one for the top kick. Then again, we got that piano for the chords. Then we have, this is actually the girl voice type of sound that I use right here. And then we have this fill that I have. And then we have more like crashes and effect sounds right here. So these really add high end to the drop and they give the overall sound energy and they really glue everything together. Then I also added this clap fill right here. Then we have some more white noise. And another like reverse, like uplifter type sound. Then we have a clap right here. And this right actually follows the rhythm of the melody. And then we got the arp that I already showed you. So let's put everything back together.
In the second half of the job, I added some more samples to it. For instance, this Tom type of sound right here. Then I also added another clap on every second kick. As well as these right here. Then I'll edit another clap on every kick. As well as this right loop. And then I added like one more ambient background sound, which is this one right here. So it really just adds like a little bit to the background and keeps it interesting. And then we're dropping into the second break and the second break is not really much different to the first break. Only difference is that I'm adding a kick drum to it. Just creates a nice flow in the second break and also helps to build the tension again and to sort of uh, keep the, like the flow of the track up and going. And then I also added strings, like staccato strings. So for these I also used Flex, this um, preset right here. And then that's pretty much it with like the second break already. Like the rest is basically the same. What I did in the build up is I looped up the melody or the leads. I think it just helps to create even more tension and to yeah keep the track interesting, to keep it different. But that's then like pretty much it. Like just in the build up, I keep the chords and the bass line on one note. I think it also helps to create even more tension and to keep the track special. So yeah, these are basically all the sounds that I use in this track. Actually, one thing that I forgot to show you is the vocal processing. So let's end the video with the vocal processing. So I have the vocals routed to channel 15. Then I have this EQ, which is actually not turned on. I think I just like experimented with it. Um, but yeah, I didn't end up using that one. So just forget about that. So for the delay, I used this Fruity Delay 3. I really like this one because it allows you to do quite a lot of things with your delay. And then my level time is set to 25%. So with this one, you can basically set for how long you want the delay to sort of keep playing. And what I actually really like about this one is that it has a filter built in. So for example, with the vocals, I use a band pass filter on the delay. And this helps to remove both top end, but also low end from the wet delay. But what's important about the delay is that I automated the yeah, like this, the amount of the signal that we have for the delay, like basically the mix knob or the dry wet signal. So we have the delay turned on at the beginning in order to fill out these gaps right here. Time on our own. It's not even light yet. And without the delay, it would basically sound like that. Time on our own. Not even light yet. 
that's just nothing in these gaps as you can tell it's not as interesting so yeah in order to not make the delay clash with like the vocals i turned it off at some points for example here i didn't want any delay because there aren't really any big gaps and then also here we don't have any gap so I just turned it out there so that's basically the principle that I use for the delay then we have a compressor and yeah this is just used in order to reduce the dynamic range of the vocals a bit and then we got a reverb so this is the type of reverb that I use it's actually quite a lot of re reverb like I have the wet signal set to 80% actually so that's really a lot but it really worked for this break and then here also really turn up the low cut on the reverb to actually 2k hertz and the decay time is set to 8.1 seconds so it's like not very long but it's quite long then we have a maximus and with this one i'm basically also compressing the vocals a little more but not like too much then we have another eq so with this one i'm low and high cutting the vocals so low cut is set to 200 hertz then we have a gross beat which is for the drop in order to yeah keep the kick uh, like the top kick clean and yeah and then we have two fruity balances just for like basic volume automation so yeah that's it with the vocal processing and that's actually it with the video so i hope you liked this one i hope you could learn something from it i hope it inspired you for your own production make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and i hope to see you in the next video bye